Hey family, welcome back to I Love Me, Me, Me. So, as you can see from the title, we are just going to chat today about where I've been, my missed abortion, and a few other things. So stay tuned. Alright family, welcome back. So, um, yeah, from the title. As I told you guys before, I was sick, and you guys welcomed me back, and I just thank you for all of the love. Uh, super side note, thank you for all of the new subscribers that have subscribed to my channel. This is definitely a place where you are going to learn lots of uh, relationship advice, and just advice in general, but specifically relationship advice, so you can better your relationship, so we can decrease that re um, divorce rate while increasing the marriage rate. Um, so I'm just going to kind of talk today. I don't have a script per se, but I do want to cover where I've been gone or why I've been gone. So I've been gone because, like I said, as you can see from the title, I had a missed abortion. This was a, a very um, crazy and kind of daunting experience. It actually strengthen my faith in God. It strengthened my faith in my relationship. It strengthened my faith in my friends. And um, thank you for all of the people that actually checked up on me, especially my other, my fellow YouTubers who have reached out to find out where I've been at. And I share this with them. But now you're going to get the full story. So this, this pregnancy was just um, very tough for me. It was very, I, I was always very lethargic and I never had any energy and I did not want to just get on here just to give you guys anything. And I felt like about a month ago when I stopped coming on here, I felt like I was starting to just give you guys anything just to make sure that the videos were up. And I don't want to do that. I am usually a high energy person, mainly bubbly, having a few laughs on here, even though, you know, most of you guys know you're usually in the room by yourself. But I am just a jovial, happy-go-lucky, very opportunistic, I'm sorry, very optimistic person. And so I knew that my energy was completely off and I didn't want to just come and give you guys anything. And because of that, of course, I had a lot of things going on in my life and the most important one at the time was me being pregnant. And so um, let me just go back and say what an actual missed abortion is. But I'll give you the definition and then I'll kind of back up as to how all of this unfolded. Um, a missed abortion is when your body, when, when you're basically, you're not pregnant any longer, but your body for some reason didn't miscarry. So your body held on to the tissue for whatever reason, and um, it just didn't get the signal to abort it or to miscarry, which is, i.e., let it go, let it flow, so you can start seeing like your, your cycle, your period. Um, and in this instance, my body did just that. Eventually, I did um, go through the actual ministration miscarry process, but it held on to the tissue for over a month. So when you have a missed abortion, again, the tissue is still in your body and it's actually non-viable, i.e. dead. Um, as in the embryo, in my case, it was an embryo. It wasn't at the it wasn't at the stage of fetus. It did not have a heartbeat at the time. Um, I'm still, of course, not at this present moment, but at the time, it was still very sad. And um, I just wanted to make sure that I took some time for me, took some time for my family, and just got my head completely right before I came back onto YouTube, onto my family, giving you guys. Um, all of the things that I usually give you, you know, um, the tips and tools so you can make your relationship that much better. And I needed to focus on my own relationship. So I had to take a step back and I didn't want to be phony on here. I didn't want to just, you know, like I said, give you guys anything. So anywho, so that's a missed abortion where your, where your body, for some reason, the fetus embryo, depending on the stage that you're in, it does not make it. But for some reason, your body does not signal to say this is not viable is actually dead let it go as in 
a period or a miscarriage and my body didn't do that for over a month so I knew that something was wrong the very first appointment that me and my fiance went to um, super side note if you are a physician i.e. a doctor that works with anybody I need for some of y'all to back up and take some um, sympathy and empathy courses so the doctor that I had uh, <laughs> She was very just in your face with all of the information. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm usually a strong person and everything. But because me and my fiance were already attached to the idea of having a second child. And um, by the end of the year, we're going to have the second child. And so when she came in, she's giving me the, the, the bad news. And uh, she just hit me with it. One thing after another. Just do. Yeah, and that. And do. Yeah, and that. And do. Yeah, and then I'm like. Okay, this I'm sitting there looking around like this. <laughs> at this time, me and my fiance hadn't even connected like eye contact. And at the end, she was like, any questions? Really be? I'm going to keep it clean, but really be? <laughs> so, um, we like, nah, we ain't got no questions. So, him and I are silent. It's super awkward silence. So, I'm getting dressed and all this stuff. After she did the sonogram, she gave me the um, information. So I'll tell you a little bit of what she said. So how I knew that something was wrong. She actually said that um, the measurement of the embryo wasn't the correct size. So they thought that I should have been um, 10 gestational weeks. And it was only measuring six gestational weeks. And it didn't add up the math and all of the stuff didn't add up from my last cycle and etc. So, okay. So she was like, you either got pregnant later than you think that you had, um, did or this embryo is not viable. And so that's a little bit of what she said. But she didn't even say it as gentle as I just said it to you guys. So anyway... <laughs> Moving past that, um, <laughs> me and my fiance would get in the car and we just quiet because now, of course, of course, we're sad or we're quiet. Like, OK, so now we got to deal with the possibility of not having a child. And let me just back up. I forgot to mention this part. She said the only way to um, see if you guys really are pregnant is for me to come back in um, another week so they can do the measurement and they can't go off of urine or blood because it's still going to show that I'm pregnant, even if the um fetus is or embryo is uh, not viable i.e. dead so I went back the following week she did it was actually a different doctor which usually I like to stay with the same person but in this case I was happy it wasn't her so <laughs> um, so another doctor came in she was very polite very sympathetic empathetic she did all of what she had to do took measurements da 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 when she came back um, because we were happy that we were pregnant, she didn't want to say that it wasn't viable. So we had to wait another week for me to come back and get measurements, et cetera, et cetera. So I had to wait another week. Of course, life is going on. Things are in my mind. I'm like, okay. And I'm already preparing myself that, like I said, something ain't right. So I know that I have lost this baby. But for whatever reason, it hasn't shed yet. So I said, okay, but I'm going to stay optimistic because God said, if you have the faith of a mustard seed, he could work some miracles, right? So I'm like, okay, well, my faith was about <laughs> that mustard seed supply of faith um, as far as the fetus growing and being viable. And most of that was because of how the doctor came in, um, some other things that I won't share here. And then... Um, also, I have a living daughter, so that pregnancy went off perfectly. So I'm just like, okay, this one, yeah, something ain't right. So when I went back the third time, where am I? Yeah, the third time. I went back to the doctor the third time. This, I had another doctor, which, again, I'm okay with that. It wasn't the first one. She, again, was sympathetic, empathetic. And honestly, y'all, I have to say that I was surprised that I was in there crying mainly because I had already prepared myself that this embryo did not make it. 
I already prepared myself. So when the doctor was in there talking to me, and you know, I'm the tears just coming, coming. I mean, I couldn't even stop, and I had like a river in there, <laughs> and I, I was apologizing to her. Why do we always do that anyway? I know it's not her fault, but I was apologizing to her for crying. And anyway, I was trying to explain to her, which it doesn't matter, but I was trying to explain to her that. I had already prepared myself that this one didn't make it. So for me to be in here crying, I honestly was surprised, y'all. I know that, that might sound weird to some of y'all, but I was just surprised because I had already prepared myself. So I, I, maybe because she actually made it real and the whole uh, mustard seed faith was gone and everything. Maybe, maybe that's why I honestly can't tell you why. Maybe somebody who's been through this situation, maybe you can let me know down in the comment section below because I really don't know why I was um, crying. Uh, after I did the preparation and me and my fiance um, had talked about it this much uh, not to throw him under the bus I love him <laughs> but he did pull a man mode um, he didn't want to he sh he basically shut down and didn't really want to talk about it so um, he just wanted to hear the final like are we pregnant or not so um, just a side note for the men if your girl is going through women like to talk about things but I didn't press him because also I didn't want to make him speak about it so eventually we did talk about it but just not in that moment so honestly I was kind of left with myself y'all to just deal with it and um you know it is what it is you know I I, I um, don't want to beat him up or anything because it's not that serious but we definitely dealt with it differently that's what I'll say so anyway the doctor gave me my options on how to shed the tissue it was two types of surgery, two different types of surgery. One was going to be painless. The other one, I was going to feel the cramps. And then the third one was, oh, I would have also felt the cramps. But they were going to give me some pills to insert into my vagina. They were going to do it in the office. And then that was also going to help the um, fetus tissue come out. And I, that's when my um, miscarriage was actually going to happen. So I opted, I'm not a surgery person, so I opted to unfortunately feel the pain. <laughs> and uh, anyway, it didn't even have to happen that way, y'all, because like two days, two days later, I actually started shedding on my own, which is i.e. bleeding and having my miscarriage. So I started shedding on my own and I never did have to go through any of the surgeries or using of the pills to help me miscarry. But it was a tough time. It really was a tough time for me and my family. And, uh, of course, we made it through. Uh, I did have a lot of questions on, like, just my friends and them checking up on me. Are you okay? Are you sure okay? Are you sure that you're okay? And I think it was just because of the way that I was handling things. And um, I'm just a strong, really, I'm a strong believer in God and his plan. And I'm just the vessel. I'm the vessel for any child that I bear or that we bear. Obviously, I go through the pain, but you, you get my drift. So I'm just the vessel. So he had other plans for this particular baby, and um, the baby didn't make it. So that's where your girl has been. She's been trying to get her mind together. And uh, I've been doing a pretty good job of that because, as I said, I'm faithful. I am a faithful servant and whatever God's plan is, I try to humble myself and not do things on my own, although of course I'm human so I get caught up in that myself, but I just wanted to come here and share my story with you guys and um, yes, I'm totally okay now. It's uh, over with per se. Um, me and my fiance were doing well. And my thought process is, if we are meant to be parents to another lovely, done, done. <laughs> I put son and daughter together. Um, if we are meant to be parents to another son or daughter, then we will be. And I'm not one of the ones who's going to try to force anything. Um, most of you guys don't even know that the first pregnancy wasn't planned. I mean... I, uh, well, we, <laughs> honestly, we had, we really had just gotten together in our relationship when we found out that we were pregnant. So things were going well, and we decided to have sex, obviously. 
but very, very early on. And uh, just as a side note, a confession right here. <laughs> I'll say we actually got pregnant on the first time. And that was very surprising. <laughs> I guess, honestly, my baby that's here, she was just meant to be here because, yeah, <laughs> she was just meant to be here because literally we had just had a conversation um, a weeks before we had had sex. We had a conversation that neither one of us wanted to have children. We wanted to be married first and uh, a lot of the traditional things that uh, you think of when you think of family life or at least that I think of. Traditional, you meet the person, you date for a while, you know, you might be having sex but no children are involved yet and 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 our plan <laughs> didn't go the way that I feel that God's plan went so my baby was definitely meant to be here Miss Odara was meant to be here and uh, honestly y'all wouldn't changed it I would not have changed it for the world I wouldn't um, she really is a blessing and she's oh man she's just beautiful of course of course most parents say that right but she is she's beautiful she's very smart and uh, just happy happy even even through the sadness I'm happy because I think that we should all take in what we need to take in when anything happens and whether we like it or not of course I didn't like um, not bearing this child but it wasn't in the plan at least now this child was and had other plans at least God had other plans for the baby so that's basically it if you have any questions I will answer them if they're not too private because um, some things I want to just keep between me and my family but yeah if you have any questions you can ask me I'm pretty I'm pretty open and um, I'm doing well and I just handle things completely different from most people um, after, like I said, I was already surprised that I was crying in the doctor's office, so I didn't, you know, cry anymore. Uh, of course, sad. Of course, of course, I'm sad. You know, was sad. Excuse me, I'm not sad anymore. Of course, I was sad, but uh, this is going to be a shock to a lot of people, actually, because I have some coworkers that watch my videos, and they didn't know, and mainly because. I wanted to wait till I was further along to share that information and uh, so they didn't know. Um, some of them probably suspected some things just because my, my demeanor was a bit different at work as well. I was just very, very tired. But um, you know, just had a lot going on in my head and work isn't everything and YouTube isn't everything. I got to make sure I'm right so I can come on here and be right for y'all. So I rambled on enough, and uh, that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> I'll talk to you guys later. Definitely give me thumbs up if you like this video, and um, definitely I want to hear some of you guys' comments. How many, how many of you ladies specifically have gone through this, and how did you make it through? Uh, did you handle it kind of the way that I did, as in it's kind of out of my hands, or were you like a sobbing mess? <laughs> I'm just curious more than anything. Um, yeah, so talk to your girl. Your girl will talk back to you. Let's go ahead and continue the conversation down in the comment section below. And if this is your very first time here, you can relate to me. You will be able to relate to a lot of topics that I have here on I Love Me, Me. Because as I mentioned before here, I'm helping you guys to decrease that divorce rate by supplying you with the tips and tools that you're able to use in your own relationship to make it that much better and let it flourish. All right. I'll see you again later. Deuces.